please be seated. I believe it's the swap. Good morning, Mr. President. Situation in Darfur, Sudan. Case the prosecutor versus Mr. Ali, Muhammad Ali Abdalrahman. Case reference ICC 0205-0120, and we are in open session. Microphone, please. Microphone, please. There is no microphone. Should I start from the beginning? Yes, okay. <clears throat> I am Judge Piotr Hofmanski, presiding judge. And this appeal arising from the case of the prosecutor against Ali Muhammad Ali Abdul Rahman. My fellow judges in this appeal are Judge Chile Boyosuji, Judge Howard Morrison, Judge Luz del Carmen Ibanez Caranza, and Judge Solomi Balongibosa. May I ask the parties to introduce themselves for the record, please, starting with the defense. Bonjour. Mr. Lauchi, good morning, Mr. President on the side of the defense for, to assist Mr. Abd al-Aram this morning, Mr. Cyril Lauchi, lead counsel, and the various quarantines uh, due to the COVID pandemic have meant that my team members can't be present this morning, but we do have uh, Mr. Zadijan Keita from the OPCD and Ms. Uh, Vedrana Rezidovic who are here by my side. Thank you very much. It's Thank you. Bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Xavier. Mr. Keita. Good morning, Mr. President. Uh, lead counsel, Mr. Xavier Jean Keita from the OPCD, and with, by my side to accompany Mr. Cyril Lauchi is Vedrana Rezidovic, who is case manager in the case. Thank you very much. Officer of the Prosecutor, please. Good morning, Your Honour. My name is Helen Brady. I'm the Senior Appeals Counsel for the Prosecution, and I'm here today with Mr. Matteo Costi, Appeals Counsel, and Mr. Julian Nichols, the Senior Trial Lawyer in the case. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Brady. Thank you very much. Uh, for the records, I note that Mr. Abd al Rahman is also present in the courtroom. Today, the Appeals Chamber will deliver its judgment in the appeal of the Mr. Abd al Rahman against the decision of the Pretrial Chamber 2 of 14 August 2020 entitled Decision on the Defense Request for Interim Release. This is a non authoritative summary of the Appeals Chamber written judgment in the appeal. The letter will be notified after this hearing together with the separate concurring opinion by Judge Ibanez Caranza. Before I turn to the matter of today's hearing, I note that on 5th October 2020, counsel for Mr. Abd al-Rahman filed a motion requesting that Mr. Abd al-Rahman be authorized, preferably before the, he the delivery of the present judgment, to observe one minute of silence in memory of the victims of the armed conflict in Darfur, Sudan. The purpose of today's hearing is the reading of the summary of the Appeals Chamber's judgment on Mr. Abd al-Rahman, appeal against the pretrial decision on his request for interim release. In these circumstances, Mr. Abd al-Rahman's request on 5th October is dismissed in limine. I shall now turn to the summary of the judgment and I will briefly outline the procedural history of this appeal. On 14 August 2020, the pretrial chamber rejected Mr. Abd al-Rahman's request for interim release 
to the territory of the host state pending trial pursuant to Article 16, Paragraph 2 of the Statute. And this decision, which I shall refer to as the impugned decision, that is the object of Mr. Abd al rahman appeal. The impugned decision is based on the pretrial chamber conclusion that Mr. Abd al rahman continued detention appears necessary to ensure that the investigation of the court proceeding are not abstracted or endangered. In this regard, the pretrial chamber considered first the prosecutor's submission that she is not yet in a position to protect witness in Darfur. Second, the report of threats allegedly made by Mr. Abd Rahman and his supporters to human rights activists. And third, the alleged high ranking position previously held by Mr. Abd Rahman Darfur his connections and the likelihood that he still has supporters who may have access to actual and potential witnesses. The pretrial chamber further found that any risk to the investigation, the proceedings and the safety of witnesses would not be sufficiently mitigated by imposing conditions upon interim lease. Furthermore, the pretrial chamber held that for the purpose of its decision, it did not consider it necessary to seek observation from the host state. Mr. Abd al-Rahman filed his appeal brief on 19 August 2020, and the prosecutor filed her response on 31st August 2020. Mr. Abd al-Rahman requests the Peace Chamber to reverse the impugned decision or his interim release to the territory of the host state subject to any relevant conditions and to order, and I quote, the immediate, immediate commencement of the consultations with the host state. For that purpose, Mr. Abd al-Rahman raises five grounds of appeal, which I will address in turn. First ground of appeal. Mr. Abd al-Rahman submits inter alia that the pretrial chamber earth in relying on the prosecutor's inability to protect her witnesses in Darfur. In this regard, Mr. Abd al-Rahman argues that his inability must not adversely affect his right to interim release. Further, he submits that the prosecutor currently has no means of conducting investigations in Darfur. The Peace Chamber finds, by majority, that this ground fails. First, the Peace Chamber notes that the pretrial chamber's reliance on the prosecutor's inability to protect witnesses in Darfur cannot be assessed in isolation. This is because, for the purpose of its finding, the pretrial chamber considered the available information holistically. Notably, and in addition to the prosecutor's inability to protect witnesses, this information included a report on threats allegedly made by Mr. Abdul Rahman and his supporters to human rights activists. It also relied on the information provided in the two warrants of arrests concerning Mr. Abdul Rahman position and uh, the likelihood that he still has supporters who may have access to actual and potential witnesses. Second, the appeals chamber finds that the pretrial chamber, in considering the prosecutor's alleged inability to protect witnesses, and therefore acted in line with its obligation under Article 68 of the statute to ensure the protection of victims and witnesses. I shall now turn to the second ground of appeal. Mr. Abdul Rahman argues that the pretrial chamber erred in relying on NGO report appended to the prosecutor's response as Annex 3 for its finding that there was an apparent that the Mr. 
Abd al Haman and his supporters have threatened human rights activists. The appeals chamber finds that, contrary to Mr. Abd al Haman's argument, the pretrial chamber did not commit any error of law concerning the standard applied when relying on Annex 3. It also notes that Mr. Abd al submission that Annex 3 was the sole basis underlying the pretrial chamber's conclusion appears to be based on a misreading of the impugned decision. In this regard, I recall that for the purpose of its finding, the pretrial chamber relied on various factors holistically. As a result, any limitation, limitations concerning the evidentiary value that Annex 3 might have it, if it were to be considered in isolation, are irrelevant. The Peace Chamber also finds that the impugned decision is not impacted by any factual errors allegedly committed in this respect. I will now to address the, the third grant of appeal. Mr. Abd al Aman averse that the pretrial chamber's conclusion to keep him in detention due to the existence of an unacceptable risk that he may exert pressure on witnesses in is erroneous, erroneous in fact and law because it fails to take into account a series of factors. The Peace Chamber is satisfied that the Pretrial Chamber considered all relevant factors and provided sufficient reason for its conclusion. Specifically, the Peace Chamber notes Mr. Abd al arguments that the Pretrial uh, Chamber erred by failing to distinguish between witnesses residing in Darfur and witnesses residing in other countries. In this regard, the Peace Chamber observes that the pretrial chamber found that the interim release would expose any kind of witnesses to an unacceptable risk. Consequently, the Peace Chamber considers that Mr. Abd al Rahman failed to articulate how the alleged error lack of distinction would amount. I will continue with the fourth ground of appeal. Mr. Abdul Rahman offers that the pretrial chamber reversed the principle that detention is an exception and not the rule. The peace chamber finds that most of the arguments under this ground have already been brought, brought under the first and three grounds of appeal uh, and warrant no further consideration. Regarding the remaining arguments, Mr. Abd al Haman elaborates on the circumstances of his surrender to the court and his willingness to comply with stringent security conditions, which in his view would militate in favor of his release. The Appeals Chamber notes that the pretrial chamber explicitly recalled the principle that detention remains the exception and duly, cons duly considered all the factors relied upon by Mr. Abd al Aman. The Peace Chamber finds no error in the pretrial chamber's conclusion that these factors were insufficient to mitigate the risk to the integrity of the investigation and the proceedings and the safety of witnesses. I will continue with the fifth ground of appeal. Mr. Abdurrahman argues that the pretrial chamber committed an error in law of law by failing to seek observation from the host state as required under Regulation 51 of the Regulations of the Court. The Peace Chamber finds by majority that his argument is unsupported by the applicable legal framework and the case law of this court. Rather, the Peace Chamber finds that the Chamber, chamber hearing an application for interim release and in the absence of any prospect 
for the application to su succeed has no general obligation to seek observation from the host state and or or the state of the state on the territory of which interim release is sought. Finally, in an appeal pursuant to Article 821A of the statute, the Peace Chamber might confirm, reverse or amend the decision appealed. In the present case, given that the Peace Chamber has rejected all five grounds of appeal, it is appropriate to confirm the impugned decision. Judge Ibanez Carranza is appending a separate concurring opinion on the issues on the recharacterization re of the alleged error presented by Mr. Abdul Rahman under the first ground of appeal and on the interpretation of Regulation 51 of the regulations of the court under the fifth ground of appeal. This brings us to the end of the summary of the Peace Chamber judgment. I would like to thank you, thank to the court reporters, interpreters, and the registry staff for the valuable assistance today in holding the hearing. The hearing is adjourned. All rise.